Hero is becoming more popular by the day, and with the hybrid cards coming out soon, there's going to be a lot more cards being scanned once that feature is open again, the marketplace is going to be flooded, and that means there's going to be a big opportunity for you to get some deals and get your hands on some of the better cards for a decent price. In this video, we're going to discuss what you can do with just $100 on the Hero app, what to pay attention to once those hybrid cards come out, and how you can take advantage of that time when everyone is panicking. So let's get started. Welcome everyone, my name is Andy and I appreciate taking some time out of your day to come this video on the channel just before we get going if you are enjoying the content and you want to support me further you can hit that subscribe button and if you want to support me further than that you can join the membership we've done a video like this back in the day of vv and how to actually pay more attention to what is going on in the app and how to make some money on it now i got some lovely comments on that saying that the video helped them significantly learn more about the market and what to do and i feel this is sort of similar in the sense of hero 2 and we can actually use this to our advantage so i'm going to go over some of the main things that you should be paying attention to when it comes to the market how you can actually actually handle this in the best way possible and don't worry you can do this with below a hundred dollars I'm just using this as a sort of start so you have a little bit of leeway with some of the things that you're buying and you're not just solely buying one thing and then all of your money is in one deck so I'm gonna do it on that you can have more you can have less it doesn't really matter let's first talk about the preparation stage I think this is more important than people actually think about and something that many of us should do especially when it comes to financial investment if that is our aim for this so you have to prepare about some of the things that are going to go on and some of the things that do happen. If you sell on the marketplace when it comes to Hero, you're going to get charged 10% instantly on the fee that you are putting up for whatever you're doing. And if you transfer it to Immutable X, then it's going to be 12.5% of a fee when you're selling it for DT or IMX or OME or anything like that. You're going to be getting a 12.5% fee when it comes to selling on that layer 2 chain. Right now, more people are going to be on the app than they are on Immutable X. I believe there's going to be 800 or so unique owners on Immutable X from what have actually sold that on there. So that's the people who have transferred, I believe, anyway. And then, of course, we've got a couple thousand on the Hero app themselves. So right now, more people are going to be buying and selling on the Hero app. However, what you have to take note of is that more people are going to have a lot more money when it comes to the IMX or Layer 2 because they can use Ethereum and some big Ethereum whales are going to hold their money in Ethereum and not in their bank accounts. So they can spend a lot more and therefore you can make a lot more on there. However, obviously the downside, there's less people who are actually trading on there just right now for Hero and therefore you might have to wait longer or find the right buyer for it. Where you have to make the decision on maybe what's best for you, what would work better, what are you looking for, are you looking for Ethereum, are you looking for just that and then you've also got to bring in stuff like maybe tax. One of the things I actually have to take note of is purchasing it on the Hero app and then you are making Ethereum out of that and then if you're selling the Ethereum for GDP you're then crystallizing the Ethereum so then you're taking those profits and then if you take your money out of Coinbase or anywhere like that to your bank account are you then going to get taxed on that as well? So there's a few things that I'm taking into consideration when it comes to it. Right now, I'm just kind of keeping it simple, mostly selling on Hero, and then I'm withdrawing from there so I can take my money out from there. The next thing you've got to take note of is right now, there's usually about a 20-day period, from what I've heard anyway, from withdrawing from Hero. I have not yet got my confirmation that my withdrawals have happened. They're just pending right now. I only done it a few days ago. So you've got to take that into consideration as well. Selling on IMX, you're going to be able to take your money out pretty quickly if you can get it to a place that you have KYC in. If you're trying to take out your hero, you're also going to have to KYC anyway, but it will take longer because they have a holding period and then there's obviously a time to actually get to your bank account. I'm going to show you just quickly on the hero app how you can actually move your cards onto IMX if that's something you want to do. So it really, really is as simple as you connect your IMX account to hero through this so i believe it will say like connect imx somewhere you'll be able to connect the account you just sign a few things it's really not that difficult and i can do a full video on how to connect everything to imx if that's something you want to do but it's literally as simple as just withdrawing to imx you send your asset to the imx wallet it will process it you'll sign it and then that's it it will send your imx wallet you'll have it in imx and then you can sell it from there okay so we've got the preparation stage out the road we kind of know what we're doing we kind of know what decisions we're going to make is like where we're going to sell it the fees that are going to be attached to the sale that we're going to be making and what's actually going to be happening next it's about understanding the market a little bit further the market itself obviously moves in waves and we've talked about this plenty of times on the channel if this is your first time coming you're probably not understanding this a little bit further so i'll take you through it a little bit more but on the app we've had a digital drop so far we've been able to get that we've been able to see some of the prices on the market what they're sort of going for and this has been a good understanding of sort of what we can pay attention to what goes for a little bit more money why it goes for a little bit more money and this is going to tell us more about what could potentially rise and what could 
potentially fall on the hybrid cards once they're fully released and people can scan them again. So if we have a look at just the commons in general for the hybrid set, we can see that some of them start at 23 and that's Black Mask. And then we go to the dearest one, which being Poison Ivy. Now this is Poison Ivy's first ever appearance on the blockchain. And we're also seeing the card design is really, really beautiful. Poison Ivy is probably one of the most popular out of all of these from what I can kind of tell from some of the research that I've done. Mr. Freeze, again, could probably be up there with Poison Ivy, but I'd still say Poison Ivy is a little bit more popular. And if we go to something like the Uncommon as well, maybe we can start to see a little bit of a pattern with this. Got to look at some of these, seeing the price difference of these going from 40 to 69. Now remember, there's only 1200 editions of this. If people are stacking too, they can also manipulate the prices a little bit more. When it comes to the hybrid sets, this maybe isn't going to be the case as much, but it is something to pay attention to. If we go up to the Superior, we can see that Batgirl and Harley Quinn are both the two most expensive in this, and I would say that they are two most popular characters out of them all. I'm quite surprised about Bane being the cheapest. Again, we've got to look at things like the pull rates and all that sort of stuff. We can see there's 667 in circulation already with the Batgirl, and there's 664, so they're all sitting pretty similar. And again, this is something to pay attention to when you're scanning the cards. If we go up to the Epics, we can see that Joker is the highest by a mile. And again, I believe Joker, in my eyes, would be the most popular out of all of these, even though Alfred, Catwoman, and Robin are still extremely popular, especially when we come to the movies and just an in general love of the Joker and what he is. He seems to be the most popular out of them all. The one thing to pay attention to is popularity. What is their popularity? What are people actually liking about the character? Is the character popular in comic books? Is the character popular in DC collectors just in general? And is this something that we should be looking at? I feel it is. Let's look at the hybrid set that we can see so far because there are people who have cards, but it's not obviously everyone. Not a lot of people have got them. We've got quite a low supply right now of what is going on. But we can see that the back cave right now is the lowest that you can actually purchase for something. Back cave has a location in it, 105,000 editions of these. But if we look at the commons, and this is what we're sitting at the moment for chapter one, what would be the most expensive? Now, for me, this would be something more in the lines that would really hold value maybe in the real world right now, character or characters that people are really attached to. So let's go down to the bottom of the commons and we can see here, actually the top by a mile is Action Comics 1, the 1938. This is currently the most expensive comic book in the world. Superman's first ever appearance with Action Comics 1. And we can see there's only 335 with a 51,000 circulation right now. Has actually been recent sales with this which is quite surprising and i wouldn't recommend anyone buying it until the scanning comes back in and more people are getting their pre-orders and they're in stores because the price for these are just going to be a little bit too high at the moment i'm trying to get you to understand here is that just because this is more expensive at the moment i still believe action comics one will be an expensive piece compared to some of the other commons even when everyone's got them. Edition sizes is half of what we'd saw with the Batcave, but also because of the significance of Action Comics 1 and being its first appearance on the blockchain for a cover itself. We can obviously see the likes of Superman and Batman here being quite popular at the top. And again, Detective Comics 38 and Showcase 4, I believe that's the first appearance of Flash and the first appearance of Robin with Detective Comics. These were two other ones that I was wanting to pay attention to with the comic covers, just purely because of their significance in seeing these for the first time. We've not yet saw these on Vivi, so again, it's one of those things that could add a little bit more value in the short term because they are the case. And this is why it's really important to maybe understand a little bit more about the market, its popularity, the addition sizes, and how to pay more attention to that. Because obviously we're seeing here with some of the commons, they're 51,000 editions. And then with some of the Batcave ones, we're looking at 105,000 editions. So these are going to probably be less popular and less expensive purely based on their edition sizes with more people pulling them and putting them on the market. Let's then have a look at the digital drop itself. What it is, what people are paying for certain things, why things are going for certain prices, what we can take away from it. Because this is going to sort of correlate to what's going on. Of course, one of the biggest things that people are going to be comparing is the edition sizes. There's only 1600 commons and when we get down to the epics, only 400 of them. And again, we've only got 100 of the legendaries. And there is also a snapshot coming up that's going to be rewarding people who are at the top of the leaderboard and they've also said there's going to be more rewards for maybe people who can't afford the likes of all of them in the app to actually reward people for collecting maybe lower tiers as well. But we've not got information on that just yet. This is what's going to be playing a part in the prices right now. Usually what happens when snapshots go on is that a lot of the cards then dump after the snapshot has happened. This is because people who are winning in the snapshot then don't need to keep their things because they're going to get access to whatever they're getting rewarded for the snapshot anyway. So we could actually see quite a drop in these prices after the snapshot occurs before maybe bouncing back as people buy in and want to complete these sets. Me personally, I'm going to be looking to complete the likes of the common, uncommons and superiors.
players once this snapshot happens just to be able to hold for the long run because again the addition sizes are quite low taking that into consideration if they have six chapters already ready for the hybrid sets as well as working on digital drops each month the first one is probably going to play some sort of significance over the long run again we look at the popularity we look at what people are paying for these digital drops cost $50 originally and you only got three cards currently the packs are sitting at around 625 for one pack they took quite a significant decrease but out around 900 and are now at 625 but from $50 that is still insane there's around 1500 packs left unopened I'm not 100% sure I don't think it tells us the circulation just here but I know we can see that in one of the sales charts that you can view on Discord what I'm taking from all of this information that I'm getting is that these are still extremely popular people are paying for them quite heftily I'm still able to sell quite low mints people are looking for those people are paying attention to them or trying to get up on that leaderboard and this leaderboard and gamification with it is actually getting people really excited and I think this is going to be the exact same when it comes to the hybrid set. This is where we move on to understanding the hybrid set further and how much score is probably going to play a part and why you can actually take advantage of this. If we have a look at something like Harley Quinn at the moment we can see her score at base price is averaging between about 42 and 45 and that's from about 235 to 290. Now the premium mint numbers are the ones that in the sub 100 scale and Harley Quinn has 800 total additions so if we click on here with the premium mint numbers and we go from the lowest mint to the highest we can see that the minimum price that we're going to have to pay for a sub 100 is 14.50 now that is exceptionally higher than the 235 floor that we saw prior and because there's so many more additions when it comes to the hybrid ones the premium mint numbers are probably going to be the likes of the sub 1000 I would say maybe a little bit lower than that but that is something that people are going to be paying attention to this means that when the market originally opens the scans happen a lot of people get their pre-orders there's probably going to be people who don't understand the mint numbers and how much of a role they play that means you can definitely take advantage of that you're going to be able to snipe lower mints for basically floor price or just above floor price when people don't realize the significance of how important these actually are because of this what i would recommend you to do is to actually choose some of the cards that are being released see which ones stand out to you a little bit more see the recent sales for them and maybe go onto the page say for example it was the harley quinn of the 2002 edition you see the page you see that the 13 score is sort of what's averaging out 1314 at floor price maybe some at the premium listings so what you could start doing is pressing f5 on it staying on this page waiting for deals to come up you'll be able to see them at a lot of different areas there's some that you might choose that are better than others but when it comes to sniping choose a few hone in on those and try to find those little areas and those little gaps that you're going to be able to get into to get the higher score to then sell on for more profit especially in the beginning people are panicking people are not thinking through and not being logical they're more being emotional they're wanting to get that quick flip and that's where you can take advantage and this is how i've made a lot of my money when it came to vivi in the beginning and also when it came to hero i was able to look at things and snipe things for a really really good price i think at the start i actually managed to snipe a katana a9 for like 11 dollars, and i sold it for maybe 750 a couple of days later Later, purely because I was focusing on some of the commons I was looking for the lower mints and that had to come up on day one now this will happen with the hybrids as well I can near enough guarantee that will happen some people will slip up some people won't actually pay attention to what the cards are they're just enjoying collecting the cards now some of you might think that's a bad thing that you're taking advantage of someone not actually doing their research but at the end of the day everyone has the opportunity to do the research to actually pay attention to what they are these videos should help you understand that more that you don't do this but it it doesn't mean that a market doesn't have those people who just list them at floor price because they don't do the research or information to understand what the value of this is definitely one of those things that if you know the person and they accidentally put it up they really didn't mean to put it up at that price then you can definitely give them it back but if it's someone who's just putting it up because they want the sale for it it all means it's your opportunity to buy they've put it up for that price they chose that price and that's fine with this the score for me is going to be really critical in the beginning people are going to look to get on top of that leaderboard therefore they're going to look for the thing with the best score and that's where you're going to be able to make your profit so if you happen to get something that's a good mint number then look on the market and ensure that you're actually doing that and when you are looking in the market choose the things that stand out more than others look at the stuff on the market that's maybe standing out a lot further than someone else if we go to maybe the superiors we can see right now that the detective comics 1000 and the joker are both sitting at the top but all of the rest of them are still sitting quite good we can see that these have 34,000 editions each so the addition sizes don't really matter that much compared to 
to these, but look for the ones people are buying more of. What are the low scores coming out of? What can we maybe get a good deal on to then sell off later? What do we actually stack in order to reap the rewards in the future? If there's a decent number of additions here, it's going to be a little bit harder. We can still transfer this to the digital collection where there's not a lot of additions for these. Meaning that if you choose to stack something like say Mr. Freeze with only 1600 additions, that means you could buy maybe 10 or 15 for under $60 and the floor rises actually quite quickly after that. Now it's not to say that people won't sell these off after the snapshot happens, but I think it's important to understand that when you have extremely low additions, if you're able to stack them, you can actually rise the price up quite quickly. And if there's a lot of people who are holding and deciding to hold for the long run, that price actually could allow you to dollar cost average selling your stuff and make a lot of profit just by stacking a few of these. The final thing I'm going to talk to you about today is the announcement cycles. Now we talked a little bit about snapshots before, but these are really important to actually pay attention to, especially if you're looking to make profit on the things that you're doing. Announcement cycles are just basically them announcing what is going on. Is there going to be another digital drop? What are they doing with the rewards for people who are collecting all the commons, all the superiors? What are people doing for the top 100? How will this actually affect my collecting style? How will this affect my transferring style? Are they going to increase the sales tax that's going to be happening? Are they going to decrease it for a weekend? Is there something going on? There's always something that's happening and if you can actually pay attention to what's going on, you keep up to date with what's happening, you're going to be able to take advantage of that. This is how I was able to make a lot of my trades in the beginning of Vivi. One of the things I remember talking about was when Ghost Ghostbusters Ghost Trap actually got announced that it would be interactive with the Slimer and I managed to pick up maybe like 10 for 70 and was able to sell them for 170 in the next hour or so. This was purely because I was able to keep up with the information and was spending some time in the community. I know we've not all got the time to do that. It's sometimes we have to do it after work or sometimes we don't have time to do it. But if you can and you can keep up with some of the announcements, this is going to help you over the long run. The misprints that have happened right now, if you happen to scan things before the misprint sort of closed and it didn't allow the scanning anymore, you are probably going to be able to take advantage of that right now and make some money. Now, not everyone can do that and that's a small percentage, but you happen to take the chance of scanning those things onto the app and therefore have the advantage over people who can't. Also got the people who are holding the packs right now and selling them on eBay for a lot higher than retailers because people are buying them. Now, if you like that or not, that's totally up to you. But at the end of the day, people are buying them for those premium prices. Therefore, people who have the packs can potentially take advantage of that. Whether that's right or wrong for you is totally up to your opinion. For me, people are choosing to sell those and people are choosing to buy those. So if they are choosing to buy them at that price, then it's totally on them. It's not really anyone's decision forcing you to do so. It's just what is happening at the moment. So there's always sort of gaps to take advantage of. There's always things that are going on, always announcements that do happen that allow you to maybe see a gap that other people don't. And if you can see it before the majority, then you're going to have a leg up before everyone catches on. This is why becoming more knowledgeable in overall markets just allows you to be a step ahead of most people. I was actually able to sell a lot of my digital cards near enough at the top when it came to it, purely because I thought it was just too inflated for what it was. And there wasn't enough users yet to really manage that hype and keep that liquidity coming into the app for what it was. Now, I still want to buy into the digitals again, but because I invested so heavily into the hybrids, that's the one I'm sort of focusing on. So by seeing these markets, seeing them time and time again, the cycles that play out, the announcements that play out alongside those, you're going to be able to make better decisions. And why I think videos like these are really, really important. These videos aren't solely to say, buy this, sell this, because I'm not someone who's going to tell you to do that, but it's just to be able to see gaps that maybe other people don't and just take in information. Maybe someone who would tell you, just buy this because it will go up won't be able to do because all they're doing is going on a basis that people will join in on that hype rather than just giving you general information that you can then take onto yourself put it into practice take action on it and then see if it works for you i'd love to hear some of your tips that you're going to be using when it comes to the hybrid set that does come out once scanning is back and once the pre-orders go live or supply comes into stocks because this is a really new time and a new era for us and i'm really excited to see how it plans out i'm planning on getting a little bit of trading done within there trying to get in that top 100 spot for the hybrid set but i don't know if i'm I'm going to be able to do it. I know the video on the screen there will be something you'll love to watch. Have a fantastic day.